Hello and welcome back, it's Adam and in this episode I want to show you how to organize your Azure resources with use of Azure resource tags. Stay tuned! The objective of today's episode is to talk about Azure resource tags, but also why would you want to use them in your own Azure environment? We all know that in Azure you can place your resources into resource groups and the typical approach to do that is to group your Azure resources by the name of the applications that you're building. So all the resources that are components of your application one will be in the same resource group. This approach is very popular because it allows you to build your application more efficiently. There's one caveat about this approach. If you would want to group your Azure resources by something else other than your application name, of course, you could implement different resource group naming convention. But if you would change your mind or want to add additional information, there's no way to change the resource group name. So to achieve that, you would be forced to create new resource group with new name and then move all your resources to that resource group. This introduces a lot of additional maintenance effort, which is not what you want when managing Azure environments at scale. And this is where resource tags can help. So if you want to assign a department name information to your Azure resource, you can do it with a tag. To do that, you would locate this resource in Azure and then assign a tag, giving it a name, for example, department and the value, for example, finance. In this case, tags allow you to add some extra information to your Azure resources. So if your goal would be to group your resources by departments, you could assign this department tag on every single resource in Azure and give it different values depending which department owns the specific resources. What is good about resource tags is that you can assign multiple tags to a single resource. So for example, you can add on owner information. So a person who should be contacted whenever an inquiry is required about this specific resource. You can also use tags to do some automation. For example, assign a shutdown time on a specific virtual machine and then create scripts which will leverage this information to do your automation tasks. When it comes to tags, you can also use tags on a resource group level. So you can assign owner, cost centers, whatever is necessary for your organization. It is extremely important to note that resource tags are very simple in nature. It's just about assigning information. So you can assign any resource tag name and any resource tag value. It is really about you and your organization and how you want to manage your Azure resources. What is important here is that resource tags are not inherited by default. So in this case, if we assigned a tag cost center 327 on a resource group app one, this cost center tag will not be inherited on this web application and this virtual machine by default. This can be achieved with something that we will learn about in the next episode, which is called Azure policy. But by default, you should know that resource tags are not inherited. Inside of the Azure portal, we already created a lot of Azure resources and resource groups, but we never assigned any tags. If you were paying attention during our demos, you might have noticed that tags were appearing every now and then when we were managing our Azure resources including when we were creating them. For example, if we would go to Azure Marketplace by selecting create a resource button, and then we would select one of Azure resources like storage account. And to create storage account, you need to fill in the typical fields like resource group name, in this case, AZ900 DevOps, and provide a storage account name. For the storage account itself, that's it. But what you can notice is that there's a tab at the top called tags. So when creating a resource, you can start assigning tags immediately. Let's say we want to assign a cost center. When I start typing cost center, I get a recommendation that there is already existing tag in my Azure subscription called cost underscore center. So I can just choose that. And the same goes for value. There are already assigned tags with specific values. So I can either choose them or type whatever I need for this specific tag. So there's no restriction here, just recommendation based on existing tags in your own Azure subscription. So in this case, I will just type one, two, three, B to assign my own new 
unique value. Additionally, let's assign owner. So we'll create owner tag and choose existing value adam.marjak. So we'll know that I'm the owner of this specific resource. And you can assign more tags if you want, or just simply leave it as is. Again, this is just a tool for you. So you decide what kind of information that you want to add to your Azure resources. And when you're happy with your selection, you select review and create, and then create. Once the resource is created, you can select go to resource to see the basic information about this resource. But what will be very quickly apparent is that there's a tag section here, which lists all of the tags that we assign for this specific resource. What's important to note here is that tags on their own don't really do anything. It's just extra information for your Azure resources, resource groups, and Azure subscriptions. What you do with those tags is where the power is. So you can do automations, operations, security, all those processes around existing tags on your Azure resources. In Azure portal, this is not the only place where you can see tags. To show you that, let's navigate to a blade called storage accounts, when we'll have a list of all the storage accounts within our Azure environment. But there's additional button here called manage view, in which you can edit columns and for example, add tags to your default view. When you do it, tags will appear on the screen and you can quickly, just by glancing, find the relevant resources by tags. So Azure portal already allows you to do something with tags besides just assigning. It allows you to easier find and manage your Azure resources. The same goes for resource groups. So when I navigate to resource group blade, I will be able to see all my resource groups, including tags, because tags is a column that I already added as a default column to my resource group view. So I can see all the resource groups that I assign tags to. And if I want to add a new tag to existing resource group, it is really as simple as navigating to tags blade and just adding new tag. I can select existing application tag and assign my own value of app one. But in this case, I want to assign one more tag called SPOC, which stands for single point of contact and provide my email. So people can email me if they need to inquire me about something regarding this resource. Once I'm done, I just hit apply, close this blade and refresh the resource group view. And in about a minute, my assignments should be reflected in Azure portal. After about a minute, we can see our tags visible in Azure portal. What is also important is that tags are natively integrated with Azure platform. If you go to cost management service by typing cost and select cost and billing management, you will be able to review the cost for your Azure subscriptions by tags. By simply navigating to cost analysis of your Azure subscription and changing to appropriate views. Let's change the view to last quarter and change the grouping to group by tag. In this case, we can select application and we can see the spread of the cost for the resources that had no application tag assigned and those that had application tag assigned with a value Databricks. One of the most common use cases for using tags in Azure is for billing purposes. So you can assign a tag to a department or the cost center, and then you can charge them internally based on the amount of the money they spend on Azure resources. And lastly, what is important is that tags once assigned can be used also for automation. In this case, it's really as simple as opening Azure Cloud Shell and typing a single command, which will list all Azure resources, which have at least one tag assigned. Once this is returned, you can review all of Azure resources with the resource groups and what tags have been assigned to those specific resources. Like in our example, we have our AZ900 DevOps and our storage account AMDemo123A with the cost center and owner tag assigned. To summarize, resource tags are a very simple key value pairs. You assign a tag by giving it a name and then assigning it a value. And that's pretty much it when it comes to tags themselves because they are designed to be leveraged by other tools within Azure 
to help you with organization of your Azure resources. And there are plenty of scenarios within Azure that resource tags can be used for, like a typical resource governance, security, operations management, cost management, or even automation. It's really just a simple extra information for your Azure resources. So how you leverage it is really up to you. There are also a lot of tagging strategies that are typically used for organizations. For example, you can tag your Azure resources by their function by assigning a tag called environment and then a value like development, test, QA, production. Or instead you can use tags for classification. So what kind of policies should be used for those specific resources? So if you are building application in Azure that processes restricted data of your organization, you can use tags to mark those resources so that later it will be easier for you to navigate and manage those resources appropriately and apply some policies, security strategies, whatever is required. And as I have mentioned previously, marking your Azure resources by their billing purpose it's a very common practice. So you can assign specific departments or specific cost centers to your Azure resources, and then you can charge them internally based on how much cost their applications are generating in Azure. Or simply you can choose to mark your Azure resources by association with users and groups. One of the typical use cases here is marking who's the owner or who's the single point of contact for a specific resource in case of some inquiries. Just remember, those are just examples. It's really about your organization and what your organization needs. At this time, resource tags can be applied on resources, resource groups, and subscriptions. But it should be noted and remembered that they are not inherited by default. So if you want that functionality, you will have to use something that we'll learn in the next episode called Azure Policies. All the materials for this episode can be found under episode 30 on my website. For this episode, we're done. If you want to move to the next episode, simply hit icon on the side or follow the playlist. If you like my work, support the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. And as always, see you in the next one.